So uh, welcome to data preparation and workflow management. Um, the first thing that I need to ask you is like, who hasn't been here in this morning actually because you see so familiar faces, but I know one person hasn't took it, two persons. All right, there we go. And my chat, like who hasn't been here this morning? Um, because I need to judge um, what I tell um, about it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a brief, brief, brief introduction only about myself and like who I am because most of the people actually have already an idea about that. So uh, welcome to data preparation and, and workflow management. Use the chat actively if you haven't been here um, this morning. Um, next to this um, uh, opening lecture, I really urge you to check out the course website because this actually contains all of the information that you need to follow through. So I got like questions, hmm, how do I prepare for this class? What do I need to do in this course anyways? It's all there. Um, just go on the course website, go to week one, and you'll find all of the things that you're expected to work on this week. So if you're short in time and you need to work on something else, you can you know, leave this Zoom call now and just like work through the page. That's also very efficient. So we've already met um, each other this morning, um, except uh, uh, a few people in the chat, so, um, and, and a few people here. So um, uh, I do want to ask you the question, uh, how did you end up in this program? Uh, okay, okay, but you are, but I mean, how did you end up in the marketing analytics program? Like, what is your interest? What do you do? What is your passion? Why do you do this course? while well, you're forced to do this course, but like, yeah. I need to, I need to know your background. Are you a programmer? Uh, or um, have you? Well, I did the rest of the ICT. Mm -hmm. and I think I think, yeah, Cool. Cool. So, what tools are you using? Um, yeah, uh, and Where? Like, what kind of firmware? Nice. So, what do you do there? In Power BI. Oh, they Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So, this course really is for you. And what do you do? Like, yeah. uh, like, what's your background? How did you end up in this program? But are you marketing in Linux or are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So maybe you know sometimes we have students from different programs. So, okay, so welcome, especially to those because you have been uh, you know you have been here this morning. Are you following on on data collection management or not? I think if you're enrolled in this program too, right? Yeah, good. Um, so let me motivate this course, uh, and I have another disclaimer for those that haven't seen it. Slow me down. Use the chat. Uh, this may sound like ridiculous to many that haven't seen the stream this morning, but I feel like I'm repeating myself because some students have seen this already. Uh, be present in my live streams um, because they're complementary to all of the other materials, uh, and I'll help you actually digest all that material that you're going to be learning in this class. Um, it's not a class, and I should again strictly tell you where I teach you all the bits and pieces about R. You're going to do the heavy lifting. I'll coach you, but I can like actually make you do it. You have to learn it and um, uh, invest a lot of time in it. Um, and maybe um, just, you know, like an online data collection and management, consider me more of a development coach that helps you realize your ambitions with regard to data analysis than anybody who, I don't know, speaks about you. I don't like that. So um, let me do talk a bit about my methodological interests here because I haven't done so this morning and I think it's very complimentary um, to, um, to what I told you this morning. So when I started doing my PhD, um, I got a data set by a big uh, telecommunications company um, from you know, a European telecommunications company. And I analyzed how effective their free trial strategy is. So free trials is a very popular way to attract consumers, right? So you get like a free uh, one month uh, subscription with Disney Plus, for example, right? And you can try it out, explore like their catalog and then decide whether you actually want to pay, uh, become a paying consumer. Headspace has it too, but Headspace is super interesting because they ask you like, you know, uh, do you want to get a free trial of seven days and then you pay, um, um, uh, I don't know, five euros uh, per month, uh, or um, for an entire year, or do you get a two week uh, period and you pay like, I don't know, 20 euros per month uh, for, but you can cancel every month, right? They have different plans, right? So it can go all flavors. Now, 
take back the time a little bit, a couple of years when I did my PhD, free trials were popular, but not as popular as they are today. And we wanted to find out how effective free trials really are to attract consumers. And the consumers that we attract through free trials, are they better customers or worse customers than the ones we would have attracted if we hadn't had such a free trial program? That's kind of the, the exercise. So I got data and I started fiddling around, right? And um, actually, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me show you how my directory structure looked like. And it's on the page. I took a snapshot because I felt there would be a, there would come a time in which this is valuable because it's so bad. All right. So this is how I set up my project. And this is a project published in an A journal in marketing. So again, that's the top when you want to do academic research where you want to get published. Um, and it's shit. I mean, look at this. It's like, I don't even know. Oh, there's a code directory. Let me find it. Is there the code that powers my project? Oh, it's number, but hey, there's like merging, which means like stitching together data sets, revision, version two, version three, version four. Maybe it's this file. Oh, but there's also called the file revision.data merging. So which one is it? I don't know. Um, hmm. Maybe I did something with data preparation. Maybe it's not even in this folder. All right, we get, oh shit. I have the same files here. And I don't know which one I use. So I don't have any way to reproduce what I did. There's no way I can give you proof that the numbers reported in this paper are actually true numbers. Just because I forgot about like, you know, which files I used to run my code because I like stored them all, but now it's breaking my neck. Um, another thing that like, just looking at this is like, ooh, this is a complex data preparation, right? So it's free trials, right? So you have like advertising data that I have, customer data, shit and other versions, direct marketing, like telephone calls to these people, discounts, discounts 2.0. Oh, that sounds interesting. No clue why I put a 2.0 there. Um, I work a lot on merging. Pre so I don't know in which order I need to run these files to get to my data set. Figuring this out will take me weeks if I'm actually, then I have, Another directory called Copula. Well, that's a, a key ingredient of my code. And, you know, I mean, I could go on and on and on. This is just like all my estimates. Look at my estimates. I have like thousands of files. I, it's not reproducible. So the chances that when you start working on complex empirical projects without envisioning a structure, without being taught a structure to do this, you'll end up with this and... That doesn't help anybody because you will have problems getting colleagues on board in practice. Like if you put your dashboards together, like I did in that day, well, you don't write code, right? It's a lot of point and clicks so people can take over, I think. But like, if you write code, this is just not a way to go about it. And we can learn from other fields which are more advanced than we are in marketing to learn it right, learn it the right way. And that's kind of the, the, the motivation for this course. And going back to what I showed you is, I needed to learn it the hard way. Like, I started working with unstructured data. What's unstructured data? Give me a few thoughts. Well, what is structured data? Let's start like this. Exactly, tables. What defines a table? Exactly. Rows and columns, right? Okay, so what is not structured data? Text. I, yes, but I can put text in a cell. That's okay. Right? I can put in a cell, I can put a text cell. Yes, videos, photos. You know, this morning we looked at Reddit, right? At the output of the Reddit JSON API. And it's, it's a tree, right? You can't put it in, in, a, in a table with rows and columns because you've got posts and then in posts you have users and in users you have the number of likes for these users. It's like, it's like a giant database and just like one object. So that's unstructured data or semi-structured to unstructured data. And people in marketing, when I enrolled in, rolled into this field, just didn't know this, right? And I just, you know, as I told you this morning, I'm, I'm passionate about music streaming. So I, I work a lot with music streaming data and that data was just like inherently unstructured but I didn't have a clue how to handle it, right? So like I taught myself like I went out to find solutions to my problems because I was not satisfied 
with how I was going about, right? Actually, that's like how I always am, right? Like I can find the problems and then I try to solve them. So um, everything that I teach you in this class concerns thus the productivity considerations when you work on big empirical research projects. Um, that occur when you do the things I'm interested in, but you know, they occur with many other things. I wanna highlight a couple of things here, uh, which are unique um, to this class. So one of the big concerns that I, I saw two years ago was that it's very difficult to understand these concepts, learn these concepts, which makes it very difficult to, to work well on projects. So we get some money from Tyson, to, uh, School of Economics and Management, and I have um, created a learning platform uh, and it's, uh, it's still on the development, but you know, we're getting there. It's called Tilburg Science Hub and I'll keep on referring um, to it all the time and we use it all the time because I believe there needs to be a place where you learn how to work productively on your research because nobody else will tell you. you know? Some research keep it as their little secret because then they're more productive than you are. But, you know, many times they just like, they don't run in these problems because they don't work on such big data sets, for example, or, you know, I don't know. I don't know. They don't, many people are not interested in solving these problems. Some are, but not all. So we have this website, which um, is actually like developing alongside this course. So I use this course to develop and test new content. And when it matures, we move it to the big platform. Um, sometimes people change our platform because it's open source. So you can also just like write articles on it and that kind of stuff. And when I see interesting stuff, I integrate it back to this course, right? So it's like a cool way of like trying out new stuff. So this is at the heart of this course. Everything that I develop in this course essentially goes out there. So when you sometimes don't find stuff on the site, you know, go to Tilburg Science Hub or the other way around. And I'm interested in further growing this platform. So if you have ideas on how to, you know, make it better, you can always talk to me. Um, I have a YouTube channel where I sometimes post about um, uh, open science. Um, sometimes I'm just like recording myself when I help students because <laughs> other students can learn from it, right? And it's like, you know, so commonly encountered problems uh, when you work with big data. Uh, I have a public code and you can find more of my work at this link. Um, and the slide deck, by the way, is on the getting, you know, course to the page. And I actually can. I posted to the chat. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, thanks for these comments. All right, let me see. It's really good to see what you're working on, Rob. So you need to come, uh, I maybe, yeah, we, we need to find a setup where that people can actually talk because it's really hard to get them in here. Um, and by the way, the screenshot did look like an FTP setup, but it's just, uh, it's just uh, the tool that I used to make a copy of this. All right, um, let me continue. Um, um, with my motivation for this course, right? So I coded a lot, but I didn't learn how to structure and my chaos is the motivation. So I can't find the data set, I can't find the code. And these are actually a more um, representative collection of the problems that I've faced. Namely, I can't reproduce the results when I want to. Uh, my peers don't really understand what I did because I, they don't see an instruction about how I did things and it's totally inefficient. Now suppose um, I want to rerun my project and let's not, let's not take this old published project, but let's me, let me talk about an active research project that I'm working on. And you know, sometimes you have to teach and then you're busy for two weeks and then you want to get back into this project. And if you're entering your project, let's say in a clean space, where you exactly know how the project works and what to run and so forth and so on, it's much easier to get started again. You know, you may know this yourself, like when you start or stop working on something that you're learning, you like quickly degrade and, and forget, right? So this technique also helps you to, you know, keep yourself sharp to be able to work productively. Also like a colleague asked me for this data in this weird project that I showed you before. And I, yeah, I, I gave her the raw data files because nothing of these prepared data files are actually usable. Uh, so why should you care? You will soon work on data intensive research projects like um, in your thesis, in academia, in business, right? Um, you will change your code all the time uh, before a project is final. Like actually none of the folders that you create when you start working on a project will remain. None of the file names that you choose will remain the same because you just don't know where the project is heading and you need a structure to keep things in shape, right? Team members or colleagues, they will look at your code and use the code but you need to write it in a way that they understand it. It's a costly investment of time and effort. 
You can do perfectly without this course and still defend your thesis perfectly fine. Will you be a productive asset in terms of coding to any firm that hires you? Hell no. Just because you're working much slower, less reproducible, you're harder to work with. If you ask people about the top skills in the field, that is one of them. But only those people know that already know this, right? So many firms, maybe they're not there. So um, your efficiency gains that you get in this course, they will pay off, I promise. So let me define efficiency. What's efficient, right? Why do I want you to become efficient? Efficiency is like when you can prototype the final pipeline of your project and then refine later. So let me give you an example. Um, let me give you a, a cool example. Let, let me think about it. Um, what are you interested in, like anybody, in terms of research questions, where you maybe know what data to use? Let's get started, somebody. Otherwise I default again to this fitness app, but I don't want to do that. So um, give me an example, what are you interested in? If you were there this morning, what website do you want to scrape? What API do you want to use? Just give me an idea. Uh, yeah, they all my metrics, so what indicates the top 10 of the day? Yeah, perfect. So, um, um, the factors that drive drive this, right? All right, so let's do a research, right? So let's suppose we scrape the data for like a month on the top 10, we can actually download it, right? So we already have the data from the website. And um, do we have some variables? Uh, let's take temperature, right? That's a weird thing, but maybe temperature is related to what people watch because I don't know, it competes with your free tribe, right? If the weather is good, you do other stuff, right? So we'll get some weather data. Let's suppose we have a weather.csv data set and we have a Netflix data set. We load it in and now I really want to do a quick analysis. So I'm merging these two things, you know, stitching them together and running a regression and um, saving the regression output, right? That's a pipeline. It consists of different steps. Steps one is download the data sets, the current data sets from Netflix and the weather stats. Let's just imagine we can directly download them, which is actually true. Then stitch them together, merge them. That's the second step of the pipeline. Now clean out weird stuff that we don't want. So maybe, I don't know, maybe they're like data retrieval errors. Maybe we just want to focus on movies and not series on Netflix, right? We want to make cleaning decisions. Next one, we want to run our regression to get some output about how temperature drives top 10. I don't know. And we want to create a report. No, let's do it differently. Let's do it better. We want to create a website that displays a graph with the results. That's, that's our pipeline, all right? Um, I can build this in half an hour because I don't care about the details. I don't care whether my model is correct even or not, right? I just stitch things together. Maybe the merge is wrong, but I don't care. I want to get some first insights. I want to prototype, right? The pipeline is already in my head. You can build it. Like the way you are told to write your thesis is wrong because you're like first hand in chapter one and then, you know, we'll carve it in stone and it's done forever. All right, next. You do your literature. This is not how it works in reality. It goes like zigzag all the time, right? So why not build the entire pipeline first or try to build it as much as possible we can and refine later? Previously with old technology that doesn't work because it's hard, right? So if you've constructed a data set and you have to reconstruct, you can't because you don't have the time. But we can automate that entire process. Like your tool that we've just envisioned, we can program it in the pipeline and run it every day. And we don't have to do anything because it's automated. So it gets the most recent data and it updates the stats on the website. Boom, we have a little website where we can play and maybe we get a lot of visitors and sell ads. I don't know, right? It's, it's just one step, it's a pipeline. And now we can zoom in on the details. We can like refine the regression. We can add another data set, put more covariates. And every day the project product becomes better. This is what is called minimal viable product. What is the most easiest product that you can build? no matter whether you're from business or research, right? I also build products. My products are papers, results, insights, your products. I don't know, are dashboards or I don't know, you're selling, I don't know. So have the minimal product that works and then refine. And this technology that you're learning in this class allows you to do that. It's way cooler than, you know, going like the dinosaurs. Um, it reduces setup costs to return to a project. Now we have documented this entire pipeline. It works. So it will also work in a week from now. It will also work in three months from now when we, I don't know, write our master thesis and, uh, you know, want to dig out that little fun project that we started. No setup costs to return. Take care. It's all the best. Cheers.
So it reduces mistakes because now, what's your name? Sorry, I want to learn it. Uh, Heng Yong. Heng, Heng Yong. So suppose Heng Yong wants to share his uh, project with who's excited about Netflix? Uh, we had some people uh, uh, with you, right? So um, because of the entire pipeline, it runs on uh, his computer. You can also run it on your computer. Oh, but maybe you discover mistakes. So you let them know. Uh, but you actually don't have to communicate because that's also old, right? You just change the code because it's an open source project and he'll get the updates automatically, right? So you can check each other's code and grow an entire ecosystem. You can rotate on tasks, um, which means like you can work 10 minutes to improve your regression analysis and then continue watching the Netflix movie because that's what we prefer more at that moment. It doesn't matter because you can quickly switch between projects using this tag. You can share and reuse code and packages. So something that I did is I developed new code to estimate certain econometric models. And we have a colleague now in Tilburg who wants to use this. Well, I put my entire code in a package. You could just load that into R and use it. You know, it's so much easier. So it saves this colleague of mine weeks of work. And it wasn't a big investment from my side. This is how you collaboratively work with each other. You can enable, enable team members to take part over of your work. You know, I promise you, you're going to be sick of your dashboard and, you know, eventually. So you want to have it set up in a way that other people can take over that job because, you know, as you grow in your profession, you make more strategic choices, maybe, you know, it's like as you advance your career. So if you set it up well, people can actually take over your work and you can receive feedback from others. So what's not efficient? Waiting. I hate waiting. I'm the most impatient guy probably in the week. I hate waiting for results. I hate for estimation. So... I just want to, and by the way, I'm waiting for hours sometimes on my results. During my PhD, I waited for weeks to get my econometric results, um, just because it's complex and you, you, you need to run like big computers to like calculate your stuff, um, which gives you a feeling we are real scientists and we're just marketeers after all, not like weather scientists or something. Anyways, but anyway, waiting is something that is very unproductive because what happens when you wait, even if you wait two seconds, my mind wanders, it goes somewhere else. You know this, right? If a website doesn't load faster than that's maybe a bad example, but like, um, well, when you get interrupted, for instance, you get a WhatsApp message, right? That's kind of that thing. Your mind is taken out of the focus that you had and you're completely lost. And the same thing happens with waiting. So if we can cut down waiting time and spend our waiting time more productively, that's, that's good getting distracted, that's this WhatsApp thing, forgetting how things were done, that's like the documentation part of this, losing data, oh hell, that's very inefficient. So let's store the data in a way we can always retrieve it. Um, using code, which isn't documented very well, is very, very unproductive because you lose your trust in the code that you bring. And becoming frustrated and feeling lost, obviously is not an efficient way to spend your work time. So. I have a couple of um, objectives in this course on how to solve these problems. Um, so the first example that I, that I wanna give is, or the, the first vision that I wanna give is, I wanna help you develop your coding skills. Um, and I give you a couple of examples, I hope the links work. Um, so for example, produce good looking documents using our markdown. These are automated reports that mix text with data output and it's a website you can like just send to people they can look at it you can recompile this and all the statistics will be updated it has features to in integrate and the, the document looks shitty right now it's just a demo right but you can make it as advanced as you want to want to have it uh, you can include graphs that are automatically updated so what's the most minimal viable product for our netflix idea Maybe it's not even a website because that's technologically very complex. Maybe it's just an R markdown with, um, with a bit of graphs, right? So I use this to inform my co-authors about updates in the project. So how this works is, you know, I have results, I have my model, and then we advance the model because the results are not looking stable or something like that, right? And every week I just push the button and all the changes that I did in my statistical code you know, were translated into this one looking graph and we exactly know where we're standing. If you're writing your thesis, there is no point in designing your regression output table a hundred times, just design it once and click that button to have it regenerate. Another really cool thing that you learn in this class is writing apps. So for example, with R, there is not a lot of setup costs to write apps that visualize public data or our Netflix data. 
right? You could just use the example code on the side and put a Netflix data and visualize how the popularity of movies evolves. You know, there's no limit. Here we use some COVID stat stats, uh, public COVID stats data. It's all there uh, at our fingertips. Um, another cool thing um, to develop coding skills is engineer complex data sets. So we have an entire tutorial on this, on how to do this. Uh, and on top of this, we have curated, pretty proud, that's actually why I wanted you to come to campus. We have a curated set of cheat sheets that you, I wanted you to learn using. And I printed them out because I think it's so much better like not having that on the screen. I don't know, maybe you're just so digital I'm not, but like it's cool looking at something physically. We even developed two cheat sheets of our own um, because we think the cheat sheets that are out there on the internet are not good enough. Um, so, you know, um, you use this and you can take one when you go. Um, to yeah, develop yourself, grow, right? Um, the second set of objectives is um, collaborating on research projects on GitHub. So I have lots of code online that I wrote and I spent years writing my code. I want you to be able to read my code. You know, these are analysis of like published papers out there. So if you work in the area of branding and this is something that sparks your interest, look at the code, learn how I, Compute things. You can even make money on this. This is a method to calculate brand equity from sales data. Okay, what's brand equity? Anybody knows this? Core marketing concept? Give me a brand with high equity and a brand with low equity. That you can probably answer, right? But which is the first brand that you think of when you, I don't know, think about um, drinks? Oh, give brand names. Coca Cola. All right. Cool. Uh, Pepsi, maybe, yeah. Now think really, really hard and try to mention that one brand nobody else in class will mention. What's that niche brand that you like don't know or like, which is like very unfamiliar? Like, I don't know, like Aldi beer. I mean, you know, who, who, who I, I don't know. It's not the first drink that you think of when I ask you to name a top brand, right? That's brand equity, right? Brand equity is like the standing of a brand as measured by consumers. So how is it measured? It's measured by asking consumers what they think and how they feel about certain brands. That's a hell of an expensive op you know, operation to run because you have to do it, you know, I don't know, across all of your consumer base and you need to bug people about it. Well, we did that, developed a method how to estimate brand equity from sales data. So if you have sales data, let's say you're a supermarket and you have already sales data, and you want to know which are the big brands or the small brands or the trending brands that are going to be the, the high equity brands of the future, you can just use our tool. And nobody is exploiting that because I have never taught anybody to read my code, but you just take it, use it. And that's with many things in science. You can just use these things and make them become viable commercially. So um, you can learn from the work of others. Um, there's a whole uh, Spotify playlist thing cluster, uh, uh, clustering here. So we had a student uh, who has his own band. So yeah. You know, you're right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So take it and, um, so sorry, I'm bad with faces. So, um, you know, just take it. Even this whole class is online at a GitHub repository. You could just browse the entire source code or improve it. And I show you how that works. Document your code, collaborating with others on code um, um, is something within reach. And then the final ambition in this class is, oh, by the way, Rob is again, I'm too late with this chat. Um, uh, and Rob, of course, is right again about this answer and hi, yes, that's true. So, um, but I'm already advanced that, that, that example, unfortunately. So um, the final thing that you learn here is automation. Um, so remember that Netflix pipeline of like downloading the data, uh, merging the data, cleaning the data, analyzing and having a PDF or website as an output, that whole process we are gonna analyze, uh, gonna automate. There are tutorials, um, templates that you can use. It's more the mindset that I wanna give you here than about that one particular code step. And then you apply all of these principles on um, a data or computation intensive research project. What does that mean? What's data intensity? You know, we typically talk about big data, right? that's big N, lots of rows in our data, big V, many variables and big T like lots of time observations about data, high frequency data, right? And other people term it as like volume, variety, different types of data that we have, the potential errors in the data that's called veracity or the velocity huh? by the speed by which data is generated and retrieved. Um, how we can redefine really is that like we're prototyping on small data makes sense. 
the data set that I give you, I don't consider big data because I work with huge data sets that are even bigger than that, right? But they will, be, they will feel big to you because it's maybe the first time in your study program that you can't scroll through the number of rows because the software can't display this, like a million rows. Or you can't scroll through all of the columns or you don't understand what's in there, right? Um, so you need to sample from the data set, for example, because if you want to analyze that 200 megabyte data set, it is very small, actually. But if you want to load it into memory and then you may you know, only have like four gigabyte of memory in your computer and you're screwed, it doesn't work. So you need to learn strategies on how to still gain some insights, maybe sample from the data, load just the first few rows, first inspect the data. But it's a problem solving mindset that, that, that you will get in this class. Um, um, and um, this is how the course is gonna go. So um, we have five skill building weeks uh, with a, a week starter every week that you watch on the site. Uh, and self-study material, mostly readings and tutorials that kind of introduce you to the, to the topic. Um, the tutorials are actually quite important. They're at the heart of this course. So you need to work through these tutorials, just like ODC, and by the way, on your own. Well, actually not, don't do it on your own. Form study groups, meet up with each other physically, online. You know, you have a Zoom license here on campus. You can create virtual rooms and meet up. Just use that work together. But I expect you to have worked through this material because you're gonna have questions and only and only if you have questions about things stuck that, you know, maybe how you apply this for a business or um, solving a particular problem you couldn't solve on your own, only then I can help you. I'm really tired of just like redoing the tutorial. That's not the point. The point is that you point out the problems where you're stuck so that I can help you, right? And then there's a project phase actually throughout the whole course, you apply skills in a team project. Find yourself good team members that you can trust uh, you're going to work on a similar data set. It's uh, extracted from uh, Airbnb. Um, and um, there's a lot of potential in this data. It's also very current. It's from a website called Inside Airbnb, um, which is coming up right now, I guess. Um, so it has like a lot of uh, data sets that we could use. Um, and you can pick any city you want. You know, if you're from Barcelona, study Barcelona data. If you are from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, take Dutch data. You know, you're kind of free of what to do here. So lots of degrees of freedom, but the same data set. Apply those skills and evolve gradually um, as your skills improve. And then you can use the building blocks and code snippets that I share, the cheat sheets to kind of build this up. Really, 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 you need to believe me that the system that I'm teaching you works, okay? Because you learn that system in the first or the second week without actually knowing a lot about coding. You apply that structure and then you start learning to code, okay? And this is the course framework. So um, we have a way of working that I want to teach you, which is coding, collaborating, and automating your work. And we apply this at the typical research process, like from exploring data, prepping data, analyzing data, and then deploying our results, like launching an app, writing a PDF report, like automated PDF report. Um, we got our course website. Um, it's available freely for anybody. So, um, and I'm posting stuff on YouTube. So, you know, you know anybody else whom this, whom you think this is beneficial, just like point it out to these persons. Um, and in the live streams, I really ask you to use the chat um, and massively use that because then we have some degree of interaction and help me as a moderator by these questions. And just like online data collection and management, uh, you can use um, uh, a team viewer in this class so I can help you um, on the screen. And then there's pulse, right? So I developed, but it's not ready. This awesome tool that allows you to keep track of your study progress. And I hope I can still put it alive um, uh, in one way or the other. Um, but it's part of the grading component. That is that you submit where you are standing at this moment in the course. Because the moment that we go online again, even now, I don't have a clue what your knowledge level is. I don't know what you did in terms of preparation. And this tool is supposed to make that like transparent. And actually I'm trying to launch the app right now to show it to you to kind of um, see where we're heading with this, but um, maybe only um, it will be live um, somewhat later during this class. And obviously, it, let me see, 5,000, oops, not this one. No, I, I even can't put it live right now. Let me see. 
No, I can't put it live right now. So um, it will come uh, eventually. And if not, via my tool, which I spend a lot of hours investing in, um, then we'll have some Google Form as a, as a, as a kind of backup solution. All right, so expect um, that you fill in a weekly progress report or something. All right, good. The project, like I said, is based on public data from Airbnb in which you built this research pipeline. And um, there is a wealth of details about this project on the site. I mean, again, this whole post website easily could fill books. So uh, we have a work plan of what, you know, I expect uh, you to work on this week. You register for Teams because next week you already set up your team repository without actually knowing what you're working on, but that's kind of what you do. So this process is a very steep progress. So keep an eye on these team milestones. They're gonna be coaching moments where I meet you individually with your teams. And you know, let's see whether we, we can maybe even do this on campus. Let's see how, how, how this situation evolves. But right now it's scheduled online. So but let's see about this, in which I coach you and your team. Um, and at the end of the progress um, of, of this course, you actually have a, a full pipeline ready um, with your project. There are grading details that exactly show you what is required to score high in terms of grades. And, um, you know, there are recommended readings. I mean, you can easily spend uh, your entire next eight weeks on this course. Obviously you have another course that you're taking, other courses that you're taking, but like, take a look at this material. It's gonna be very helpful for you as you, as you work through this, uh, this course. And then there is self and uh, peer assessment, which means like at the end of the project, you're gonna evaluate your group members and your grades are gonna be corrected. So the one who contributed most to your project and most quality, contributions, they get a higher grade than the average team grade. And members that did a lot of free writing, they're going to be downgraded. And you can even fail the class if you're like a notorious free writer. So don't try your teammates. Um, good. In this course, we make um, use of tutorials. Um, some are self-developed, but others are uh, from data cam and software carpentry. Um, let me see. I got a question. How many people in the group? Four to five. And I recommend you to have four people in a group just to keep the vibes that go, because otherwise you have the chance that, I don't know, it's hard to coordinate five people. So. Um, try to stick with uh, four. And uh, by the way, um, Michael says he loves to make a group uh, with um, uh, the same people as in, in this other class, and that's perfectly fine. So you have full freedom to choose. Um, there will be a group um, in which you can enroll if you don't want to choose, right? It's going to be called the random group. So if you, don't know anybody in this class and you want to meet somebody um, uh, and one of you makes it random just join that group and um, i'll assign you random okay uh, we got four tutorials blah blah blah, blah um, which may make the research process right first do your product thing with like code setup then you're going to explore data prepare data sets for analysis and then you automate your project and these skills trust me are very highly valued by the job market Filling in this pulse, you get 5% of your team grade, uh, of your uh, course grade, 45% is the team project. And we have an online computer exam, randomized questions. You can't go back and forth between questions in one part of the exam. All the details are on the course page. I'm not a big fan of like reiterating everything. So take time to read that course page and then you can come with like good questions. My commitment again is boost um, research productivity, um, help you um, learn R, uh, but again, uh, becoming an expert requires years. And like in online data collection and management, um, I use open software only. It's only that way I can guarantee you can actually use the tools that um, you learn. Um, also like online data collection management, there's a high chance that you're gonna feel brain dead in a week because you've never coded. Everybody feels like this, but at one moment you need to get started. And I just feel it's time for you to get started. Otherwise you wouldn't have chosen this program, I hope. So um, we have quick feedback loops. Uh, I am available on WhatsApp. I haven't turned on my phone, so I have missing messages this morning, but um, you know, um, we'll get there together. Um, there are steps of escalation, which don't differ much uh, compared to online data collection and management. To sum up, try to find a solution yourself. Look at this slide again uh, before contacting me, but usually I'm very easy to contact. So, you know, I want to solve things quickly. Um, sending me long emails is less efficient than uh, sending a quick question on WhatsApp. Uh, this is my WhatsApp number. So if you haven't had the chance to kind of at me, um, by the way, it's not my private phone, it's WhatsApp for business. So I kind of 
try to keep these things separate. So um, you can add me and uh, we can be in touch um, uh, on it. Um, actually, the best opportunities uh, that happened to me in the last four years that I'm using WhatsApp in school actually came through WhatsApp. So um, there was one student four years ago and uh, he had an idea about a platform which ultimately became this. And now it's not active anymore, but it was a website, a product uh, to visualize uh, Twitter data uh, from the European elections. It started right there when I was on the train and I had like lazy time and students send ideas, right? See me as your coach. Like you have the right to be developed, especially your generation because you suffered most, I think from this pandemic. So like, I don't know, use the resources that you get. Like you need to grow now even more than before. So use my brain and context and whatever to, to make that happen. Okay, that's what you're here for. That's university. Okay, so um, and I have like abundant of examples like this. So let's be in touch. And I think for me, this is a good way. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable and you prefer sending emails, that's completely fine. I will answer your emails too, but then maybe a little small. Good. What's in for you? Central job market skills, signal expertise, just the very same things um, like online data collection and management. What are like common struggles? Yeah, I mean, Take time to become acquainted with me. I'm like maybe, I don't know, different from other teachers that you've seen, like all my colleagues are different, right? Take your time to get used to my style. Realize Canvas is not the thing I like doing because it's closed and I'm more of an open person. So, you know, get familiar with the website. And if, if I can actually launch this app, by the way, if somebody really has some good programming skills in Python, you need to help me because I still have to solve a couple of problems. So um, uh, talk to me after class then. Um, I hope this app will eventually see the light of the day. Um, uh, yeah. It's important. Maybe that's all I want to say. Um, now let's have a little chat about what would make this course a success for you. This profile is a little different, right? So the weird thing is I'm teaching it. I'm teaching like two courses at the same time and students get confused because they always say like, you know, it's, it's like, it's like one course, it's one big course, but it's not, it's like different, right? So the one thing comes at the very beginning of the research process is just when you collect data, well, this is a whole philosophy about thinking about empirical research projects. It's different, but it's still me. So it feels the same, but it's not, all right? So let us try to spot some like unique challenges that you think you're facing in this class. Like who has experience with R? I think the R level is much higher than the pipe level, right, this morning. So who has experience in R? So tell me about it. What, what did you do in R? I went mostly in statistics app. This is more for machine learning. How to do the question model. But it is more like intermediate level. Cool. I don't have I'm getting my hand involved in real life projects. Mostly it's uh, based on the data uh, yeah. uh, data science, data modeling, and stuff. But uh, in there, the data is, is more clean and structured in a way. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, the instant Airbnb data is also, I mean, it's a bit clean, but then again, it's still messy. So, you're going to learn something. So, maybe you can. Yeah, you can learn how to how to do the entire pipeline thing, right? To, to put stuff. Cool. What are other experience levels here in R? I have some experience, um, some data mining, some data visualization. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm still a beginner, but uh, I also work with R uh, Markdown, superior project, project of R Markdown. Good. Text mining, some basic level. So. Yeah. So, who has never worked in R? Okay, good. So you're the majority. Yeah. You need to point that out to me all the time, right? Because otherwise I like kind of tag along with those that already can do stuff. And just now I was like, oh, this is cool what you do. Um, so um, it's difficult to teach this class because, you know, you're complete novices and then also more intermediate users, right? So how can I teach both of you at the same time? Well, this is how it works, right? You gotta teach your friends and, and colleagues a bit of your skills, all right? Because these are very valuable. So, and your skills as well, right? Because you know to use that software tool for particular purposes, right? All that I'm teaching you is to use it for regression analysis. 
You can do, I don't know, you can do anything with it in terms of analytics, machine learning, I don't know, image recognition, you can do voice analytics, you can do anything, right? And you have that expertise in this one little area, use it for your project. It's cool, right? So why don't you do, you know, you don't have, you don't have to do a regression analysis. You can do some classifications. Take some tutorial from DataCam and sneak it into that, that package that you're building, that, that pipeline that you're building. So it does other stuff, right? So you're the experts in this that you can bring to the class, plus maybe helping others. And you also said you have experience to overcome those first hurdles of frustrated coding that everybody that has never done it will have. All right. So what, um, um, uh, well, at the same time, what you can learn, yeah, intermediate users are the pipeline thinking but that you don't do have, the structured thinking about projects that you don't have, maybe a lacking GitHub experience to, to make your projects go. So there's a lot of stuff for intermediate users too, but I have to focus on you guys that don't have that experience. So um, maybe the course feels a bit slow at the beginning for you, but I don't know. But for you, it feels very, very steep, but trust me, this is probably what you signed up for with that element. So what would make this course a success? Give me some ideas. What do I need to do? Or do differently? Or I don't know. What would you love to do in this class? Just shoot, shoot out some ideas beyond what, I, um, what we've discussed. Anybody? has a thesis project on my mind already. What would you love to work on? Cool. We'll get there. Okay, so it's gonna be a little dry. You do stop and you don't know why you're doing. By the end of the class, you're like, ah, oh, that's fine. Okay, so just like pack along a while and uh, it's gonna be good. So getting started, this is what you need to do. Watch the kickoff of the weekend, by the way, this may be outdated. So let me go to the side, modules, getting started, all right. So it's a kick off if you haven't seen it, still watch it. Do your software installation, <clears throat> do two readings. One is on data selection, right? It's a very, very general article, a very short one. It looks quite academic, but it's quite easy to read. Tells you a little bit about what data there is and how to get it. If you're working with a company, how to get an NDA signed and stuff. It's interesting. And then a guide for Scrum. Like who has used Scrum? Are you using Scrum in the, no. the business? No? You, you, don't, you don't either? All right. So it's a, it's a, it's a, probably the most uh, used uh, project management framework in, in the IT world. It's very cool, it's very quick. You're gonna learn it in this class, so read about it. And then you're gonna work through an R tutorial. Um, and actually, um, yeah, it's here. That itself takes like four to five hours to walk through. So take your time, go through this. Um, and uh, we'll have a live stream at the end of this week where, um, we talk about the problems that you encounter and uh, I try to you know, place it in, in, a, in a bigger context and that takes place online, like the other classes of this course too. I think here there is less of, um, there's less, um, let, 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 let me just see the chat. Oh yeah, some of our online friends have some experience too. And I see there's already a bunch of like uh, group activity going on. All right, do you guys have any question? Anything that's still unclear? All righty, then I would say um, that's that. <laughs> Good, I think you're also out of energy, right? So um, yeah, sometimes I'm like a little loose with hours. Like if I don't have anything more to say then you know, it's going to be a shorter lecture. So thanks a bunch uh, for watching to uh, the online friends and thanks a bunch for coming. Make sure to take these cheat sheet packages uh, with you. Take care. <laughs>